This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. Alpha Natural Resources, an energy company dedicated to respecting the land. Alpha Natural Resources, we power the world through the energy of our people. Haley Buick GMC, the place for a new Verano or Terrain Denali. In Richmond and online at HaleyBuickGMC.com. Everywhere there are lighting poles, there's one more opportunity to save money. Intelligent Illuminations provides cost-effective wireless lighting solutions for roadway or area outdoor lights. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. So what do you do? Information about getting involved in advanced technology careers, making everything from clean energy to life-saving medicine, is available at dreamitdoitvirginia.com. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. week in Richmond and a welcome to two very special guests who between the two of you have more than 50 years experience working in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, Clive Chrisman who currently is the director of the Department of Conservation and Recreation but prior to that Senate Finance, Deputy Director of Public Safety, House Appropriations and then some other state agency work prior to that. Welcome. Glad to have you on I believe for the first time. Actually, David, I think this is my second time. Oh, it was a few years ago. That oh, we it did, has been uh, a long time. Something. I think when I was deputy secretary. So it but, was. Uh, it's great to be great to be back with you. Now time flies. Well, thank you. And Joe Elton, uh, the, the the junior of the two, as far as years of experience, at least. Yeah, we I got a we couple won't, years won't on get into, the, into the age <laughs> part, but. Uh, uh, now Deputy Director of, for Operations and Conservation of Natural Resources. Uh, when you were on before, it was with, uh, as Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Director of State Parks. State Parks. Yeah. So, delighted to have the two of you on, back on, uh, and, and have you talk about what's happening in the agency uh, and, and many of its facets. And I've got to tell you, it's maybe been there a long time, but I would encourage people when they go on the, the website for, for the agency to find this delightful quote from Captain John Smith. And it says, Heaven and earth never agreed to frame a better place for man's habitation than Virginia. And I thought, there's, there's lots of good important information on uh -huh. there, but as a, a lover of history, Virginia history, it was delightful to see that, that uh, Captain John Smith quote recommending Virginia. Well, don't we have it all in Virginia? I mean, I think that's what uh, John Smith was thinking, the abundance of the, the fishery and the wildlife and the, just the, how scenic the, the Chesapeake Bay region was. And, and that was just scratching the surface. We've got our central Piedmont and, our, of course, our mountains, our magnificent Blue Ridge and Allegheny Highlands. And so we really have it all from the Atlantic Ocean to the mountains, and we're so convenient at the doorstep of the nation's capital. So we really, don't you think, Clyde, we are fortunate to live in one of the prettiest and, and I think best places for outdoor recreation and tourism. Absolutely, and David, uh, appreciate you mentioned our website. We're very proud of our website, www.dcr.virginia.gov. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, I know we wanted to talk, uh, focus some about state parks today, but I'd be remiss if I didn't take a few minutes to talk yes, about please. the many facets of the Department of Conservation and Recreation. In addition to state parks, uh, we have the responsibility for soil and water conservation in our division. Basically, uh, one of the biggest things this year, we'll have about $31 million that we'll be providing in cost share assistance uh, to farmers throughout the Commonwealth to help reduce water pollution. Our dam safety and floodplain uh, flood management division, uh, which is responsible for uh, for regulating a couple thousand dams in the Commonwealth of Virginia and making.
making sure ensuring public safety and that those dams are maintained up to the requirements uh, both for federal and state law. Then we also have our uh, Planning and Rec Resources Division, uh, which does a lot of work with state parks in terms of, of master plans of state parks, but also assist local governments and uh, provide, help providing uh, grant funding and also providing uh, technical assistance in terms of, of uh, planning and development of local uh, park resources as well. Um, we have our um, uh, Public Communications Office, which is uh, critical in, in, they maintain our website in addition to uh, uh, responding to the many uh, constituent and media inquiries that we have throughout. And then, of course, the, what keeps it all rolling is our Division of Administration and Finance, uh, and that is a division that we've been working diligently over the last uh, few weeks to, uh, to, to strengthen, and we're very happy with some of the progress that we've made there. Well, you know, you mentioned the website. I've, I've got, again, saying I, I look at quite a few not just for this week in Richmond, but enjoy looking at, at websites from different state agencies. And I won't say that yours is unique because I haven't looked at all of them, but I, I like the fact that if you go on that site, and we're going to put the address up, it, you have your mission statement, you talk about your vision, people are interested in your regulatory actions, you even got places where they can click and go to town hall and click here to sign up and get notices, strategic plans, and then ending with a code of ethics and and I think that um, if that's not on all agency sites that's kind of thing I think it would be an encouragement and be helpful for the uh, citizenry of the Commonwealth to have that kind of information kind of at their fingertips mm -hmm. if they go on the internet where they could whether they're interested in your code of ethics or your regulatory or this or that it's, it's all right there on one page where you can you can see it Absolutely, and I think that that's very important because not only does that communicate to the public, but I think that also shows a level of commitment amongst our staff uh, to that code of ethics uh, and uh, being the best being the best stewards that we can of the taxpayers' dollars at the same time, working hard to deliver the absolute best programs that we can uh, for the citizens. So, and uh, the the one other division that I would be remiss if I didn't mention is our na our, our national internationally award winning uh, natural heritage program. Uh, we have 61 mm -hmm. natural area preserves uh, throughout the Commonwealth, and uh, our primary focus there is protecting endangered um, plant and animal species. Um, and our natural heritage division uh, is some of the most dedicated folks in our agency. They spend a lot of time out in the woods and the ticks and the chiggers uh, cataloging rare plants and finding occurrences of them. Uh, and the protection that we provide, uh, very, people are very familiar with our state parks because we obviously uh, want to encourage visitors to our state parks. Some of our natural area preserves, and this information is available on our website, are open to the public, but our primary mission there is not providing necessarily the recreational resources as much as the protecting uh, those, environment, uh, those, those sensitive environments that are on our natural heritage sites. I'm, in, I'm curious about your, uh, your thoughts about the website. Uh, we find that we're a little bit different than a lot of government agencies where people know what they're, you know, if you're going to taxation, you, you've got a specific question in mind. Right. But uh, our department, in addition to being a resource, the website really needs to be a, a, a marketing tool so that people that are looking for outdoor recreation and tourism opportunities in the state know that those 36 state parks with lots of cabins and campgrounds and swimming areas and picnic areas and all kinds of things for them to do in the outdoors, hike, bike, horseback ride, you know, canoe, fish, you name it, you can do it in a state park. And as Clyde said, a lot of people enjoy birding and, and passive recreation in our natural area uh, preserves. So, so the website needs to be a little more dynamic than maybe most state agencies. And we've gone through a little reform of our site here recently, and so we're getting good feedback on it. Well, you know, I was trying to recall, because I've been on the site before when, when your predecessor was, was there and, and talking about parks, and, and mm -hmm. I said, this looks has a different look, a different feel. And, and I would say, as one who goes on many of the sites, it ranks right up there with tourism, which, has, which really has a Well, site. that's high and, praise. And, and, and really, the, the interface between the tourism site that can direct you to state parks or others, I think that... Uh, it's dynamic, but I think that, um, and it may be because of the uniqueness of the, of the department, of the agency that would, that would almost require you to have that kind of, uh, of a dynamic website, but you're, you're there. 
Right. Well, thank you very much for that positive feedback. One of the big new additions to our website is the Code of Virginia requires that we publish the Virginia Outdoors Plan. Uh, and it was last uh, published seven years ago, mm -hmm. and it was printed, and it's literally like the thickness of the New York City phone book. And this year we did something new. Uh, the site, the, the uh, plan has been published, but it is only available electronically, so you can get to that from our website. Uh, actually, uh, the First Lady, uh, Dorothy, Mc Dorothy McAuliffe, uh, did a, a, a great announcement uh, when that was rolled out, and we're starting mm -hmm. to get a lot of hits on that website. Another thing that we recently have done is we have gone to a web-based, when, when we have visitors come to our state parks, we'd love to have them fill out customer comment cards so that we mm. can gauge how oh, we're doing. Yes. Well, we have gone to an electronic uh, a customer co comment card, and we've got more people filled those out in the last two months than I think had done in the entire, the entire last year. year. So uh, obviously the public is moving to more towards that medium, and so we need to, we need to be flexible and, and keep up with that. Well, let me give you an update about our state parks yes. uh, this summer. Uh, we had our, our best Memorial Weekend uh, on record. We had our best Fourth of July on record. So that tells you a little something about what hot and dry uh, can do to outdoor mm -hmm. recreation mm -hmm. and, and park uh, visitation. And so if we can avoid the, the hurricanes and, and foul weather through uh, Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to predict that we'll, we'll top 9 million visits and have uh, our, our best year ever. Uh, we've been in a good trajectory over the last uh, uh, decade or so, but uh, weather will sometimes knock visitation down. But we had last year um, nine, almost 9 million visits and a million overnight visits. So our, our parks really are, are great overnight destinations for cabins and camping and we actually have on the website now access a new program that one of our staff came up with. It's cabin cooking. And so one of our staff uh, puts together monthly a program on things that you can do in a state park cabin that are, that are easy and delicious and healthy using local produce. So it's a, it's a nice new program, cabin cooking with Shannon is the name of that program. Oh, that, that, yeah. that's most interesting. I'll have to check that out. And I, and I know folks really have to book their time to, to be staying overnight in those parks well in advance. I've, I've heard that from members of my own family who've enjoyed it and said, well, you, if you haven't gotten the room already, you probably aren't going to get it, that sort of thing. Well, so it's really... I, I'm going to tip my hat to Clyde and uh, his work with the General Assembly over the years. Um, going back uh, to uh, the 1990s, there was a recognition that if we grew the amount of uh, infrastructure, uh, campgrounds and cabins, that it would help us generate revenue to become more self-sufficient. And when we first started working on that, we were probably at about 30% of the revenue, 30% um, mm -hmm. of what we spent annually would be generated in parks. Now it's pushing 60% because we're able to make more revenue ourselves. Uh, through the cabins, campgrounds, and other facilities, and that's been marvelous. We do reserve 11 months in advance, and mm -hmm. during the prime season, principally the summer season, uh, those are week-long rentals. If you get within 30 days and the cabin is available, we'll rent it for two nights. But otherwise, throughout the rest of the year, it's a two-night minimum, and uh, we, have, we enjoy robust support year-round in, now in our cabins. Yeah, as Joe said, uh, our revenue this year uh, is, will set a record. Uh, we're knocking on around $19 million in revenue that's generated uh, through either parking fees, uh, cabin rentals, uh, uh, campsites, um, and, and then the sales in our, in our gift shops in each of the state parks. Um, those are our primary sources of revenue. And uh, it, it was by design for the General Assembly back with the 2002 Bond Act. A lot of the focus was on these types of facilities that generate revenue that help us to support the park system. And it has worked because that shift has gone towards now where uh, more and more of our budget uh, is uh, relying on the user fees. And, and as part of the uh, comments that we get back from our visitors, we try to make sure that those fees are reasonable. Um, and, and we don't get complaints uh, about, the, about the, the prices people are willing to pay um, to, to come and spend a week in the park. And um, so we you know, try to keep that happy balance of char charging enough to, to, um, that we, we don't, you know, we make the revenue we need to operate the facilities, but then we don't uh, discourage a family of four from being able to come and spend the week in the parks that, the, the, that our, our facilities are affordable to the public. How's the transition going for you? You've, you? Much of your work, both in Senate finance and then if you jump 
over that time in public safety and House Appropriations, and now April 1, I believe, was your starting date in this, this new position. Right. It's uh, Well, I, t I tell you, David, I've worked with the agencies through their budget for, for a dozen years uh, during my time in the General Assembly, and I thought I knew a lot about the agency. Um, in the short period of uh, roughly four months that I've been there, I've learned a heck of a lot more about the agency. It's uh, quite a diverse agency. Uh, we have uh, just under 400 uh, full-time staff, and this time of year with all of our seasonal staff in the parks, we have about 1,100 part-time mm. staff, uh, mm. and I mentioned the, the numerous divisions that we have in addition. So um, it, it's, it's been quite a challenge. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I will say this, uh, we have some of the most incredible dedicated state employees uh, that I've seen in all, with all the different agencies that I've worked, at, worked with uh, over the years. Uh, the dedication and the commitment of the folks that work for DCR is just phenomenal. Uh, and, and, you know, let's face it, unfortunately, we don't have some of the highest paid people in state government, certainly not some of the highest paid people, period. But the, the level of dedication and commitment to the mission of the agency is what really makes the difference in terms of the, uh, the level of professionalism uh, that our folks bring to work with them every single day. You know, I'm, I'm, when you start talking about the dedication, I'm remembering having the opportunity to have sitting in these seats, and, and gosh, I think we had about six or seven people here for that taping of ones fr from the state parks who went up to New Jersey. Yeah, that's right. And who, who helped after the devastation that took place there in the hurricane. And and they, they were hard-working state parks employees who, who took the time to go and help in a, another state who'd been hit. Well, that was yeah, that was uh, following Hurricane Sandy when yeah. uh, the devastation was just so amazing. And we had braced and prepared um, a crew uh, to help in case Sandy hit uh, the Virginia coast. Um, fortunately, it passed us, but they were, they were ready and able and, um, and asked, um, you know, could we be helpful in some way? And New Jersey picked up on that. And what, uh, what that crew did in one week's time was they restored a campground Mm -hmm. that had been totally devastated and would not have been open, they said, for probably years, and it got open that year. Uh, so it was a great sense of satisfaction. Uh, you know, we may not make as much money in, uh, in the uh, Natural Resources Secretariat as, as some others, but I'll tell you what, the rewards are, are, are there, and it, you're, you're working with people. People don't go to parks to have a bad time. They go there to have mm -hmm. great memories and enjoy the outdoors with family and friends. And and so our our staff really are ambassadors for for you know the helping people get uh, in the outdoors. I would I would say this year um, is our going to be our biggest year ever in terms of interpretive programming and environmental education. Uh, you know, if you look at the website and you you take a look at the offerings. Uh, we've got night hikes, we've got mid moonlight canoe paddles, we've got concerts, mm. uh, we've got hikes um, along stream beds, we're doing uh, cleanups, uh, water quality programs, we're doing all kinds of neat things that are fun for the family to be involved in, just exploring nature and enjoying the out of doors. And so great times uh, can be had this summer in our state parks and I would urge uh, people from across the state if you haven't visited our parks, get out there and do so. And if you haven't been there lately, you need to understand that we've been improving our parks and making them even better. And our staff are incredibly, as Clyde said, uh, committed to the effort and well-trained. So it's, it's a great way to spend time in the outdoors. One of the uh, questions that we ask in terms of our customer satisfaction survey is would you recommend this park to your neighbor or friend mm. and uh, <coughs> the uh, response that we're getting I think one most recent is about 97 percent. 98.6. Excuse oh, me. Wow. 98.6 percent <laughs> of folks that are visiting our parks uh, say that they would recommend that park to somebody else. And the so. other 1.4 probably doesn't want the competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you've also had transition because while you both are ambassadors of the state parks and all that's happening in the agency, uh, you have a, a new title, some new responsibilities. I spent 20 years as state parks director, and when Clyde came on board, he did a little reorganization of the agency and asked me if I'd be willing to serve as the deputy director of operations, overseeing things that I love, state parks, natural area preserves, public communication, environmental education, land conservation, those, those kinds of things. And um, it was hard to, I couldn't say no. Um, 
I felt like if I could uh, help the agency. You know, for years, you know, you'd be down in the division, you'd think about if, if I could make a change upstairs, um, here's, mm -hmm. here's what I'd like for us to do to improve the agency. Well, now I have the opportunity to work with Clyde to try to do that, to, to make the, um, the central um, apparatus of the agency serve the divisions that are out there in the field uh, as efficiently as possible. That's our goal. Back onto that nice page on the website that directs you different places. There's one reference to strategic plans. As, as you think as a director and you dep deputy operations, what are some of the st strategic uh, issues that you see going forward uh, 2015, 2016? What are some things that you're going to be taking this agency to in the, in the strategic plans? And I think that it even references that that plan is under revision, so we're not asking you to divulge what the plan is. But Well, let me talk about some of the uh, issues that are yeah. facing us in the other divisions, and then maybe let jo Joe talk a little bit more specifically about state parks. In terms of the Soil and Water Conservation Division, our biggest challenge in terms of a strategic plan is doing everything that we can as, as our part with DCR uh, to meet our water quality goals mm -hmm. under the Chesapeake mm -hmm. Bay Watershed Implementation Plan. Uh, we have a huge milestone coming up in 2017 within the ultimate goal that by 2025 that we're going to meet the requirements that all of the Chesapeake Bay states are under in terms of improving water quality. Um, our focus at DCR is with working with the agricultural community and getting farmers to put those best management practices mm -hmm. on the ground that really do help to protect water quality. Uh, and for example, one of the big projects that we're working on uh, just came from a meeting, uh, came directly here from a meeting with us, is the, the process of working with farmers to get livestock out of the stream. When you have a cat, when you have a cow standing in a stream, uh, it, not only is it detrimental to the environment, but it also is not good for the health of the cow. So there's advantage, there, there's, mm. there's advantages to both uh, the, uh, preventing the pollution from running on at the same time, getting that cow out of the stream. So that's an example of one, uh, one area that we're really working on our strategic plan in that division. In terms of dam safety, um, it's been a huge challenge with the dam safety regulations that were uh, passed a few years ago in response to federal requirements. And a lot of these dams, these small lakes throughout Virginia, are actually owned by homeowners associations, for example. And it can be hugely expensive for uh, these homeowners associations to maintain and to have to do major capital improvements on these dams. Uh, the General Assembly last year passed uh, legislation that's requiring us now to look at the, a new way of measuring uh, the capacities of the dams called the probable maximum precipitation. And so that's an area that we're working on now in terms of updating our strategic plan as we move forward um, with those particular issues. Um, Joe, I'll let you talk about specifically some of the state parks. Well, you know, our, our parks were envisioned to be places that did basically three things. One, they would, they would be places where the health and well-being of the citizen uh, could be improved and enjoyed through the productive use of their leisure time. There'd be places that would conserve our, our natural and cultural treasures, and there'd be economic engines. Okay, so on the first one, the health and well-being of our citizens, we recognize that we've got a crisis in America and, and certainly in Virginia in terms of uh, an epidemic of uh, obesity. We've got type 2 diabetes in children. We've got these attention disorders. We've got too many children on psychotropic drugs, and yet the CDC will tell us that five minutes in nature uh, is mm -hmm. the equivalent of a Prozac in terms mm -hmm. of uh, having a calming effect. And so. We feel the need, we're competing uh, with technology, with uh, video games and, and the like to get kids off the couch and out of the house and into the out of doors and, and that's a challenge that we're trying to meet. We're, we're trying to use technology to entice them out of doors to showcase for them how this can be fun, exciting and good for their health. And so that is one of the strategic things that we're looking at as, as a society. The other is there's a changing face of Virginia. There's a growing popula Hispanic population. Uh, uh, the Caucasian population is shifting. And so these cultures recreate in the outdoors differently, and we need to market to all Virginians in effective ways. I tell you, you've, you've provided a great deal of information. I thank you very much, Clyde Crispin, Joe Elton, for being on This Week in Richmond. and recommend people, after they've seen the program, go to your website and Absolutely. check it out.
Yeah. Thank, thank you both very much. Thanks for having us, David. Thank you. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. Alpha Natural Resources, an energy company dedicated to respecting the land. Alpha Natural Resources, we power the world through the energy of our people. Haley Buick GMC, the place for a new Verano or Terrain Denali, in Richmond and online at HaleyBuickGMC.com. Everywhere there are lighting poles, there's one more opportunity to save money. Intelligent Illuminations provides cost-effective wireless lighting solutions for roadway or area outdoor lights. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. So what do you do? Information about getting involved in advanced technology careers, making everything from clean energy to life-saving medicine, is available at dreamitdoitvirginia.com. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.